Hello everybody watching at home, I am Phoenix and today we're going to be talking about comparisons, priorities and how we gauge success or at least the idea of success. So we've been raised as children, you know, we've all played Monopoly, you know, a game that's based primarily on the same model that our way of life is currently based on and many western civilizations where capitalism thrives and materialism is the new religion praying to God through consumerism and uh, having our prayers answered with endless products the same old obsolete crap and if it's not, not obsolete now just give it a week and something better will come along because that's the way it is you know we've all played Monopoly and we're all playing this game at least in some parts of the world more privileged slash less privileged it depends how you look at it um, and you know through our upbringing and through media and propaganda and indoctrination in the school pens, indoctrination pens, uh, we are taught about, you know, the, the, the way of life and the, the system that is life and you're taught about how to crunch figures and, you know, about uh, the economy pretty much. And that's what we live in, you know, we don't live in a, in a, a community uh, as, as much as we live in an economy. And economics is all about the distribution of goods and services and products and the flow of income and profits and expenditure. It's all about money at the end of the day. It's all about consumption, producing, burning things up at an accelerating rate. And that's what we live in. We live in a system. We live in a monopoly, not a community. You know, if we're lucky, maybe we can work at forging a sense of community on this monopoly board of life. But it can be very difficult when the principles of the game, when the principles of monopoly or capitalism are manipulation, deception, and exploitation. You know, when we have to exploit our fellow man in this rat race this, and climb up the ladder by pushing on, onto the shoulders of pe people below us, you know, when we've got to manipulate and exploit and we've got to deceive and, you know, try to sell snake oil as being the ultimate cure all the times. Um, ultimately, it's hard to foster the right kind of principles and values that you need for a community to even begin in the first place and exist in the first place, let alone thrive, you know, in a community you don't need, you can't have exploitation, uh, you know, manipulation or deception because that just fosters distrust, uh, resent, it separates people, it divides and community Okay, so it's the, the most important word in that word. Unity is a big part of community. So, you know, we live in an economy and through this economy and through the advertising and through all the old shows back in the day, you know, we've been raised uh, with these ideas of success. You know, the more profit you can make running on your will, you know, to keep up with the Joneses. And we've been raised to always First of all, compare, and this is where comparisons come in. We've been raised to compare ourselves to other people to determine how successful we are, how confident we feel, how happy we feel with where we're at and where we're going. And a lot of the time, it's more so where we're going. Where we're at only really matters in terms of showing, you know, what do we have to show for our work? What do we have to show for our accomplishments? And that's where all the object accumulation comes in which is also another big part of our ritual, ritualized uh, lifestyles is accumulating a lot of nice things. You know, one status, reputation, the image, it, it, isn't, it isn't even about them anymore. It's not just about how nice you are, how interesting, or how knowledgeable, how wisdom, how helpful are you, how much of a good person are you inside and just to have around. It's not just about that. It's also about what do you have? What things can you provide or offer or entertain with? So it's, it's, it's all about the things which extend beyond you that define who you are and your worth, sometimes more than just who you are, or by your lonesome, just solely you. You know, it's all about other stuff. And that's what this economy is based on primarily, is the circulation of stuff. And people only keep playing the game if it's worth investing whatever they have to invest and sacrificing whatever they have to sacrifice and committing so much life and time and energy to playing the game. They're not gonna play the game and, and commit all of that if it's not worth playing. So all of this stuff has to be drummed up 
uh, to have a lot of value and to be perceived as being worthwhile. Hence, through our raising and advertising and indoctrination in schools, it's, you know, it's always been about keeping up with the Joneses, about, you know, getting the next best thing. You know, by the time you've got the newest iPhone or iPad and this new iRevolution, they're, they're already halfway through making the next iPhone, the iPhone 7 or 8, iPhone 28 rendering your current iPhone obsolete. And it's not just with phones, but with everything. Everything is becoming obsolete. And even if you can get the same thing for, let's say, 10 bucks, someone might spend a thousand bucks, maybe not that much, but a hundred bucks on something that, you know, they can get for 10 bucks just because of a brand difference, just because there is a perceived uh, height in its status, or in, in, its, in its image, which adds to one person's status. You know, the more money you can spend on food, you just, let's say you spend 50 bucks on one meal, and then you only eat like just a few bites and leave it there. And I see that happen as a waiter all the time. People spending copious amounts of cash, and they're not even eating their food, and sometimes having one sip out of their drink and leaving it. And I think a lot of it is just a show, and so a lot of it's just power, a power trip to think, this is how much money I have, this is how much money I can waste and not care. So there's a, there's a lot of emphasis on status, and the status we determine based on our comparisons with other people and uh, the comparisons of the things that we and the stuff that we work for and accumulate compared to the things and stuff that other people work for and accumulate. So and, and it's, even if you look at like in the 60s, the old school adverts they used to have like, oh, look at this new bike that Sally has. It's such a good bike. Do you want to be like Sally? You want to be cool like Sally and be having, riding her bike? Well, get this bike. That's a really bad example, but you get the point. You know, that there's keeping up with the Joneses mentality has been driven into us since the day we're born. And, you know, the, the problem is there is that it's actually impossible to keep up with the Joneses because who are the Joneses exactly? You know, it's not just one couple and once you're on par with them and beyond, you're sorted. The Jones just represents anyone and everyone, whoever you're looking to. You know, people don't compare themselves and the things they have to everyone else. You know, everyone's got their own focus and their own kind of role models and, and you got peer groups that they compare themselves to and the things they have to. So, you know, some other people they might not even care about or even bother comparing their lifestyles to because they don't even, they're not even, you know, not even paying attention to those people and their lifestyles. Maybe they don't perceive it as being worth the comparison, you know? So that's the thing, whoever you're comparing to in your field, it doesn't matter what field, the reason you cannot keep up with the Joneses is because there are always Joneses that are higher than you on this ladder. It doesn't matter what rung you're at, the, the ladder keeps going down and the ladder keeps going up. And it really depends how you look in the ladder. If you always look up, at those people above you with nicer things, earning more money, going on more holidays, doing all the things, you know, earning more luxuries in life, more convenience in life, and really playing the game of Monopoly the way it's meant to be played, then you're always going to be envious and you're always going to feel like you're not really, you're not really where you want to be, that you want to go better, you want to get the next best thing, you want to get a bigger paycheck, a better job, more holidays, you're going to want more. If you keep looking down and play the whole comparison game that my mother used to play when I was a child complaining about food and she'd be like, well, those children in Africa, they would be thankful for that meal. You shouldn't complain. She has a point. And the point is if you compare yourself by looking down on the ladder at those people below you, then it's much easier to appreciate what you do have and, and where you're at in life. You know, if you compare the stuff you got now to people that have worse stuff, or not, not any stuff at all, then it becomes quite easy to appreciate what you have. Personally, I don't think we should focus so much on comparing. I mean, if you are gonna compare, I think it's better to look down the ladder instead of always looking up, because there's always gonna be people better than you and further ahead in the race. Even if you get to that position up there that you're, you've been envying this whole time, once you're there, you're gonna look up to the next ranking, uh, ranking rung on the ladder of success you know and it's an endless cycle and I think some people displace their ideas of success when they keep looking up on this ladder and, and playing according to these rules and according to these principles that have been distilled in us and impressed upon us time and time and time again 
about always having better and and going on more holidays and all of this. This whole materialistic, you know, limbo game. But instead of trying to get lower, we're trying to get higher. And and the rope's always lifting higher. You know what I mean? I don't know why it's going with that metaphor. But yeah, I think people displace their priorities and their ideas of success. So you might have a guy that thinks that, you know, he's got to achieve more. He's going to run harder on his wheel of life because he's going to make as much money as those guys running on their wheels. And then when those people look at you running on your wheel extra hard, they go, oh, well, he's making more money than me. He's got a better lifestyle. He's getting a hotter check, so she's getting more, you know, having a more rewarding life. I got to run harder. And this cycle is easy to get trapped in. And I feel sorry. I feel sorry for the children that are afflicted by our lifestyle. And I feel sorry for the children that are displaced because parents be displacing their priorities. And people be displacing their ideas of success. You know, a father thinks that he can fill a void all the time he's not there spending with his child just by filling it up with cash and things that the child wants and any, anything he, he commands or for his birthday. Here, have, you know, have your favorite toy. Have a new PlayStation 4. Let's go to Disneyland. Oh, I've got to leave halfway because I've got to finish some work. You know, and that's the thing. Like, half the time people think they're chucking your child in front of a TV and they need some daycare or, you know, getting other people to mind your child is enough. It's not enough. doesn't matter how much you fill those voids of time that you're not there with money and things and other people filling in the gaps for you. There is no substitute for good parenting. There is no substitute for just being there. And that is the biggest upset. And that is the biggest failure, I think, that the more we succeed in this one respect that we've been conditioned to see success in, we also fail in other respects that we haven't been as conditioned to, uh, you know, perceive value, to perceive success, such as being a good parent, being a good husband or wife, being a good brother or sister, or a son or daughter, you know? It's always about, you know, and that's the thing, some parents think, well, I'll just, I'll just buy my child the best education. I'll get them everything they want, and I'll teach them a few things here and there. And then for the most part, I'll let them figure it out. People will get by like that. But they're not really going to learn a whole lot in terms of social uh, qualities and how to just, how to learn. I think one big thing that people overlook, and you can just tell in school, they don't teach you how to learn so much. They just show you a whole lot of figures. They write a whole lot of stuff on the board, have it show you a whole lot of books. I went through all the stuff that I, I actually did in year one and two. It's about this much shit, just paperwork. You know what it was full of mostly? Endless shapes, geometry, and me just tracing patterns that I saw in a piece of paper onto a graph sheet. And all these various figures in mathematics. A whole lot of stuff that I don't even use right anymore. And I think we've spent so much time learning about figures and shapes and how all these different ideas fit about, you know, civilization and our way of life and just things we need to know. But what we actually never did learn is how to learn, which I think we need to learn. You know, we, we never learn, instead of learning how to critically think and how to inquire and question answers and dig deeper for more accuracy. Because how do you prove that proof exists? Proof is relative and there's always better proof. There's always more accurate answers. And rarely often do we ever have a concrete truth. And then that's it, you know it all. There's always more. People aren't taught to think this way. Children aren't taught to think this way because the only way children learn this is by having their parent present. And you know, on average, statistically, you know, a, a parent will only spend 20 minutes with their child over a week. No, two hours. Two hours talking with their child over a week. All right, that means it's only about 30 something minutes a day. And fair enough, we're all working and we're busy. But seriously, if you can't make time in the spare time you do have, then change your job, cut down some hours, make some adjustments and reprioritize. Because your child's not gonna learn how to get by in the world when they're an adult. They're not gonna learn how to pursue opportunities, to even perceive opportunities, and to learn how to figure out what's best for them. 
and how to make the wisest choices if you're not there to show them. And you expect them to learn this shit from a, a picture box, from the TV, or from school. You know, all they're gonna learn in school is, oh, look at this, this is a rock. All right, I want you to write down on a piece of paper that this is a rock. All right, okay, now tell us, Jimmy, what is it? Oh, it's a rock. Oh, well done, it's a rock. And that's it. And that's the thing that in a lot of ways, school doesn't really teach you to try to understand things for, you know, for what they are as well as for what they could be. They just tell you one perspective of what things are, a rock. And no bother exploring what it could be. It's just, this is what it is, write it down, memorize, refer to that memory whenever you are asked the question, what is this? You know, people don't think about gemstones and healing, the magical power of stones. And I'm not gonna go into any, any of that theory or practice, but at the end of the day, it kills the magic in what things can be and the, the deeper truth surrounding various items and various things in the world. Because we're taught just to, to, to look at something, to frame it in a very simple concept, and then just toss it. This will never be anything more than a rock to people that really listened in school. You know what I'm saying? So you, children are gonna learn how to have open ways of analyzing and determining and, and understanding things deeper. You know, it's all about just framing as many different concepts in the most minimal, and limited and closed off way. It isn't really, doesn't really apply to a lot. So if you want your child to be successful in life, and by successful I don't mean if you want your child to run the wheel as good as you do or better than you do, but if you want your child to realize who they are, to realize what their passions are and, and, and their dream, and to, to be able to figure out the best steps to take in their dream and how to avoid the pitfalls. And you need to be there for your child. And this is where priorities come in. You know, I've already talked about comparisons. I'm just gonna have a look at how much time there is recording on this left. Oh, where's my information gone? Oh, my information's disappeared. Where is it? Gone, it's all gone. You know, we compare this idea of success, which is based on the wrong priorities in the first place, to other people who are also basing their ideas of success on the wrong priorities. And I'm not saying everybody does this. I'm not even saying a vast majority do this. I'm just saying enough people do this for each individual to be concerned and to try to help thy fellow neighbor understand what is truly important in life. You know, it doesn't matter how successful you are, how much money you make, at the end of the day, we all die and we're buried in the same hole. You know what I'm saying? And there are people that have been billionaires and at the age of 40, 50, been depressed, you know, and not fulfilled, not happy. The families are completely dysfunctional and falling apart. And a lot of it is due to people misperceiving what true success is. And true success is living life and understanding what is important, not just what is taught to be important in school and through propaganda and through what other people tell you when you grow up, but figuring it out that it's about the connections we make with other people, family, friends, lovers, and it's about the experiences that define those connections and give it shape and color. You know, it's about the qualities that we develop as a person, not just the skills, but the quality. It is about who you are, not just about how you go about achieving. You are not a how, you are a who. And all of your hows come out of your who. But a lot of people, they don't be thinking about the who. Who am I? They're too busy lost in the whole, how am I going to do this? How am I going to go about setting my plan and achieving my plan? They're so stuck in planning the next step in planning how to raise that bar higher, how to make more money, how to get more out of life materially, luxuriously, conveniently, while having their back turned to what is essential. And at the end of the day, life and everything that grows is like a garden, a garden of life, one might say. And in this life, you've only got so much water in your pail. You've only got so much time and energy and focus and willpower. You know, it's impossible 
to water everything with adequate time and attention equivocally. You know, you've got to determine and prioritize without comparing to other people. You've got to prioritize what's important to you and what's truly significant to you besides the superficial. At the end of the day, what do you want to look back on? And what's going to make you smile as you look back? What kind of garden of life do you want? Do you want to keep watering these plants of work and business and more objects? Well, and they get greener and greener and greener and everything behind you perishes, your family, your love life and your marriage, your children, your friends, your self-development, you know? You can't water everything, so choose. What do you want to see flourish in your life? And what would you prefer to see wilt, wilter away? You know, there's always something shrinking, there's always something growing. Every time a cup is filled, another cup empties. This is the way of life with yin and with yang. You know, it's all about balance and there is a very dualistic place. What goes up must come down. What you've got to just decide is, do you care more about your bank balance going up and your house filling up while other things go down? Or do you care more about your children growing up to be confident, healthy, you know, successful, truly people that are gonna be happy? Even if they're not the richest person in the world, maybe they're the most emotionally rich. If you care about your children growing up to be good people, leading great lives and doing great things, then you've gotta be there to raise them, to bring them up. And that's what an upbringing is. When people say, oh, you know, how's your upbringing? That's not just the allotted time between, you know, your, when you're born to your teens, how's your upbringing? But it's actually how you brought up. Just like in a cake chucked in an oven, you know, and how you're, how you're cooked and how much attention and care has been put in determines how the cake grows up, how it raises. You know, just because you've lived out a certain amount of time, if you haven't received enough attention or love, or people just being there to talk with you and help you learn and how to question, then you're not gonna grow that much. You're not gonna develop. So your upbringing might not even be there. Maybe you weren't even brought up that much. Upbringing isn't just about time, a certain time frame. It's about filling that time with inadequate attention and energy and care to bring your children up in the world. You know, to raise them on their feet so that they're confident and in control and without all these distorted and, and deluded ideas, you know, of what success is. You have a lot of people in the world that are so depressed, so lonely, even though they're married or with someone, still lonely. And just, you know, the, even though they've, they've ticked off so many things on their, their list, and they've achieved this and they've accomplished that and they've got the greatest resume and lists of everything. It doesn't make them happy at the end of the day. It doesn't do anything to fill that void which has been ignored because they are misplacing their connection to their self. They're misplacing the need to develop as a soul, as a personality, to develop social interactions to, and connection and love and affection, you know? They're, they're ignoring that and they're relying even more so and more desperately on trying to fill that void with materialism and more holidays and more expensive dinners and what whatever. And at the end of the day, all the superficial things, it doesn't matter what becomes of the outside world. It's not going to do anything to change anything about what about you. It's not about what becomes on the outside. It's about what becomes of you as a result of everything on the outside. And that's what it's about. There's no point comparing to the outside world. There's no point prioritizing things on the outside world and various merry-go-rounds. When really at the end of the day, it's about who you are as a result of your experiences, your connections. And it's about you passing on through your children down the line as a legacy, a true legacy those qualities that you took the time to develop and prioritize. And that's pretty much it. 
So keep it in mind, people. It's never too late. It doesn't matter if you think, oh, well, I'm already stuck. I'm, I've already forged this career path for so long, and I'm stuck here, and i just got to keep doing this. There is never too late to create change or to make adjustments to your life. And even if it means a compromise or even a sacrifice of some luxuries and conveniences, maybe you have to get out of your two-story home on the beachfront and just settle for a little, little house somewhere, somewhere not as uppity up. But even if you're going a bit down in, in those superficial respects, you might find yourself being more essentially fulfilled and, and everyone that you care about also benefiting, truly benefiting a lot more. And you might find that the compromise was worth it. It's never too late to succeed. And it's never too late to drop the delusions of success. What kind of garden do you want in your life? Focus on that. Every time you're focusing on the garden in front of you and every time you're watering your life away and your time and your attention, your energy, your willpower, the more you will this to be, everything behind you will wilter. Wilt. It's going to shrink and die. So figure it out. What kind of garden of life do you want? And start watering accordingly.